You the one that I want, yeah, me now, nah, you know. Nah. She know I want her, she a fortune teller. Welcome back to my channel. So, as you can tell, we have another Halloween look. This is actually the last of the looks of the Halloween season for 2020. I know, I know, but we had a good run. Um, so, I really, really hope that you enjoy this one. And if you do like the more creative looks that I've been doing over the last like month or so, then please let me know and I will definitely be sure to start doing more creative looks kind of throughout the year, ones that aren't necessarily Halloween focused, but still are more arty um, and creative. That's kind of like the whole reason why I got into YouTube. So it was really nice to get back to my roots and just do some proper artistry. Um, so I have really, really enjoyed it. And if it's something that you guys enjoy and want to see more of, listen, I'm so on it. So just let me know. Um, but anyway, I'm going to stop all of this but thank you so much for clicking in on the video i love you all so so much and um i hope you enjoy this one i feel like it's appropriate to listen to a bit of fortune teller because it just kind of makes sense okay the last look here we go so i'm starting with the standard foundation i've used for every single halloween look which is the smashbox full coverage I don't, I, do you know what? I don't understand how I still don't know the name of it, but you know the one. Um, in the shade 3.02, and I did it just on my forehead um, because that's the area we're going to concentrate on. Set it with some translucent powder, and then um, I just did my brows as normal. So now I'm just taking this um, eyebrow pencil in the shade black, um, and I used it to just draw out the just general outline of the eye. To be honest, like the most important thing is getting the proportions right at the start. So this is the bit where you want to take... Um, the most time and um, effort and just really focus on the precision here. It doesn't need to be too perfect This is the good thing with kind of stenciling it out nothing is final so you can always like go back and edit things later on But if you've got a good base um, Then it always really helps and make sure that you use a reference picture or you keep referring to your own eyes because doing it from memory will often lead you astray <laughs> so um, Yeah, try to use a reference um, now I'm taking a white eyeliner. It's kind of like a water activated one. It's from Siva Beauty and I really really like it for a lot of arty looks um, and I use that just to fill in the whole white section. Then I took a brown matte eyeshadow and I started um, creating the detailing on um, the eye so you can see I'm doing the kind of fibre strokes. Then I wanted it to have a general green base so I took like this green eyeshadow um, and I just stenciled it in. You want to kind of block out the main part and then you can keep sort of layering it to create the effect you want over time. So you can see I keep going in with darks and the lights and the lights and the darks and I keep layering going on top of it. Um, and then I just packed on top of the white with this green eyeshadow. So overall you need to remember that it's lighter as you go closer towards the pupil and as you go outwards it's darker. So you want to create that that gradient but obviously like through the little, um, you know, like the little lines, like the little fiber looking things. Um, so yeah, you just want to keep layering it and then, um, yeah, then eventually you'll be happy. <laughs> um, now I'm creating the dimension on the eyeball. So I'm using just some um, eyeshadows like brown and then I went in with a little bit of this kind of deep red. I used both of them from the Jaclyn Hill palette um, because I wanted to create quite a realistic, uh, fleshy kind of tone. Then I went in with my eyebrow pencil just to um, tighten up and kind of show the, the depths of the corner of the eyes. It's great for any kind of uh, precise little bits that you need to add in. Then you can see I'm using um, a brown eyeshadow on a really small brush to create the dimension because nothing is going to be like a very clean cut line. Everything is going to have a bit of dimension or fuzziness to it, which as you can see, I'm now doing around the outside of the eye here. I'm making it like a little bit fuzzier so it's not so um, you know harsh um, and now I'm just lightening the inner waterline creating some shadows from the top um, eyelid which is going to be going down towards the eye because you know that's it's never going to be equally lit up because of the top lid 
Um, so yeah, just going back and forth with that and then using the eyebrow pencil to do eyelashes and you want to do them in brisk strokes and make sure that you don't make them too uniform and then I just went in and deepened up the root of the lash by making it a little bit darker so then it shows kind of the depth where the lash is originating from and I also completely skipped the eyeshadow but I feel like that was the less important bit <laughs> okay now for the slightly more normal makeup I went and primed my eyelids with the Too Faced Born This Way concealer and set that with my Too Faced translucent powder then I took this shade from the Juvia's Place Masquerade palette and I just kind of went wild with it really. Um, I wanted to keep deepening it up, I basically wanted to do a cut crease so I went for like a purpley pink cut crease. Um, so you want to just keep building up the colours till you're happy. Then I cut my crease with the same Too Faced concealer and faded it out towards the end. Then I created that same gradient with the same colours, so um, making sure that it's got the deepest purple in the outer corner leading to the block pink across the lid. Then I took my Midnight Cowboy Glitter Eyeliner from Urban Decay and put that in my crease just to add a little bit of something. Um, and then I was it was kind of like tight lining but also kind of not. Um, I just took black eyeshadow on this flat shader brush um, and I used it to define my lash line but also fade into the eyeshadow because I didn't want it to look too harsh. Um, and now I'm taking that same foundation and just putting it all over. Um, contouring my nose with the LA Girl Toast um, Pro Conceal. You know how it is. This has been my new go-to, you know. Actually, I'm going to do a new updated like everyday makeup on that note. Sorry, I'm getting so distracted. Okay, same concealer that I was using before. Baking, highlighting, contouring, all of that jazz with the same Too Faced powder. I'm not going to bore you. Um, and then I went back in with the same eyeshadows and I wanted to just blend everything together and do the bottom. So I wanted to really like take the pink quite far down because I wanted it to look like a little bit extra, you know. Um, then I'm taking this bronzer. This is a new one I use from Makeup Academy, but it's kind of like a blushy bronzer. I don't really know how I feel about it. Anyway, then I took my Fenty Beauty um, highlighter did my usual highlighting and then I put these little gemstones under my eyes on the darkest part where I'd smoked out the lower lash line. Then I took the same order of colour so I went with the pink first and then I deepened it with the purple and went around my lips to create a kind of ombre um, but it's kind of almost like a, re um, a reverse ombre so like I'm doing the pink first and then I'm doing the purple but I'm not doing it on my lip I'm doing it on the outer like parameters of my lips um, so that then when we put stuff on the lips it doesn't interrupt it. Does that make sense? So you want it to be sharpest, closer to your actual lips. Then I'm taking this kind of like lip crayon thing from Makeup Revolution. I just wanted any kind of base really, uh, which wasn't going to show too much colour. Then I started packing on eyeshadow, so I did the same thing. I went with the pink first and then I deepened up the inside and I used like a black mixed with a purple um, to do that bit. And then I realised I literally got it on my tongue. I was like, oh my god, like what the hell is going on? Like how did I even do that? But like, you know, we move. Anyways, then I took my highlighter and I used it to highlight almost like just below the cupid's bow, like the, the tip of the lip, I guess you could call it, um, and the bottom as well. Then I went in with some black eyeliner um, and I just decided to draw some of the star signs because I thought it went with the same kind of vibe and just add a few details. I don't know what this was, I just thought it looked cool. <laughs> Okay guys, so this is the finished look. I really hope that you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, drop me a comment and also subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. I would really, really appreciate it. I also just wanted to say thank you so much for all of your love and support across this whole Halloween series. This is the final Halloween look of 2020 so I really, really hope that you enjoyed these looks and if you want to see more creative looks, please just let me know and I will defo start creating them here and there throughout the year. Oh god. Um, but thank you guys so much. I love you all so 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 much I hope you have an amazing day an amazing Halloween stay safe. I love you guys, and I will see you next time Mwah. Bye guys